Hey everybody, Jamin here from Game Show, uh, here with another vlog. I'm actually in my new office. It's not just mine, obviously. There's There are other people that, that work here with me. But they're not, they're not here right now. I came in early. In any case, I'll be filming uh, my little vlog episodes most likely from here, but I'll probably do some from home. Let's get down to the subject at hand. This week has been, the past like seven days has been an incredible week for censorship, or rather the issue of censorship. First, you have the situation that's going on with the interview, but in games, um, we're seeing a similar type of uh, conversation about what sorts of things should be released to the public. The developer of a game called Hatred, again, I'm not, I'm not defending this game, Hatred, but Hatred sort of build itself as a genocide simulator in the words of uh, the, uh, the the press release that they had pushed out to the public. Um, it's a game which you kill lots, you're an angry person and you kill lots of people. Steam, it was initially upvoted a bunch of times, thousands of times on Steam Greenlight, and then Valve made the decision to pull the game entirely. Even though it had been voted up by the community, they decided, you know what, this isn't something we'd really like to sell in the App Store. Um, the creators of Hatred, they then countered, and I think this is an excellent point, that you know that, that, that Steam carries lots of other games in which you kill lots of people, whether it's Grand Theft Auto or a game like Postal. These are games in which you can reenact genocide. What's the difference between our murdering game and these other people's murdering game? Valve then reinstated the game, they reversed their position, it looks like it will be available to the public after all. And then Lucas Pope, the creator of Papers, Please, um, reported that um, his game, Papers, Please, is an incredible game. I've talked about it in the past. You play as a Eastern European passport checker um, in a fictional Eastern European state. Um, and there are sections of the game where you have to do body scans and then there's nudity. Um, in the version of the game on Mac, there's an option about whether or not you'd like to turn on nudity. But it's really important, I think, for the artistic statement of the game. It was initially announced that um, Lucas Pope, I said that uh, that Apple had uh, d declined to take the game because nudity was involved. Okay, so where am I going with all this? The big question I think at hand is that because games are a relatively new medium, they're not used to having to deal with these kinds of questions about censorship, whether or not it's artistic or moral, whether it's justified or not justified. These are relatively new issues, especially in a day and a place in time when um, these digital distributors, whether it's the App Store or whether it's um, Steam or whether it's uh, Google Play to a lesser extent, they have an incredible amount of power over what sorts of experiences end up in front of you. Um, this isn't as much the case with Steam where there are other places that you can buy digital games, but that's absolutely the case with the App Store. That's the only way that you can play games on your phone is by downloading things on the App Store and getting through Apple's approvals process. From my perspective, as someone who loves games, this is something I don't think Apple's done a great job of. Um, Paolo Pedersini had released a game called Phone Story, um, which was like a piece of, uh, obviously a piece of satire, talking specifically about the conditions of people who make um, things like the iPhone and tried to release on the App Store, obviously Apple um, wasn't too happy about that. But the longer thing is that um, Apple has a history over the last couple of years of holding games up to an entirely different standard. So in the case of Lucas Pope, um, even though you know the reason for that game being rejected was that there's nudity in it, there are tons of other things in the App Store, whether it's film or um, the covers of albums that have nudity in them. Um, so, but Apple has explicitly stated that they apply a different standard to the nature of games. Do we really want to be in a position where um, digital distributors are making these decisions about whether or not something is or is not a form of art, whether or not something should or should not be released to the public? The problem that I have is that games are still in a place right now where they're not necessarily considered um, necessarily considered an art form by everybody, certainly by a lot of people. If you've grown up on games, then that's pretty easy for you. But there are a lot of people who feel like games are juvenile kid stuff, shouldn't be doing sorts of things, shouldn't be tackling serious issues. I do think that, um, that this situation is it's good that we're having this debate out in public about what it means. I, I don't know that Valve necessarily wants to be in a position about arbiting whether or not the fact is whether or not hatred is a legitimate genocide simulator or just a really violent game. In any case, um, let me know what you think. Hash it out in the comments and I will see you all next week.